So it's a little misleading um, as we kind of look through the data and, and look underneath all of this. If you take just five, five to eight tech names out of the market and you've got basically the S&P 495. Here we are. Um, most of markets are up, led by tech. Uh, the big conversation around AI. Um, I don't think six months ago anybody knew what ChatGPT was, and now everybody's talking about it and where AI is going to have us in in years to come. So you know, as we look at the markets now, and we see where where the Dow, the S and P, and the markets that we all track and follow. You know, the Dow is basically flat here year to date, but the big driver behind the market has been. Um, has been tech and that's what's been driving the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is up about 8% on the year, but if you take away the big tech, it's essentially flat, um, nearly flat the same as the um, as the Dow Jones. But what I'm gonna pull up really quick, I'm gonna pull up the chart of the NASDAQ and what you're gonna see here is what's been the driver here. You know, So when we look at the big names that drive the NASDAQ, uh, Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, Tesla, Facebook, Etc. You know, there's been a giant run since October, but if you look here at this chart, it's really just been clawing back um, a lot of the losses from last year. And so, these these prices, you know, everyone's betting on this AI revolution to come through, and that's really driving a lot of these prices. I'm sure you guys are seeing a lot of the same thing here. But, yeah, for um, sure. But it's been pretty nuts, and and we're we're recording this as uh, Nvidia, a big name in the Nasdaq and a big name in the S and P 500. Nvidia reported earnings. And the stock is up nearly 30% today. And that's a big driver for, for the market as well. But the majority of our clients do not have concentrated artificial intelligence portfolios. And so it's a little misleading um, as we kind of look through the data and, and look underneath all of this. If you take just five, five to eight tech names out of the market and you've got basically the S&P 495, um, the market's relatively flat. You know, I saw I saw a stat on that the other day, Jason, that we were looking at it. It was uh, the top eight performing stocks in the S&P 500 account for 23 percent of the index and 90 percent of the return. Mm -hmm. So there's 500 stocks and then the top eight represent 23 percent of it and 90 percent of the return for the year. So that goes along yeah, with what we're, you're saying. That we're starting to see that more and more, too, with, you know, uh, with the globalization of, uh, of economies and how things with the Internet have changed everything. Big names are driving stock performance up and down, you know, more more in the last probably decade than ever before. Yeah. Well, and that's where I mean this. We don't know yet what this AI drive is going to do. It's a lot of hype. It's a lot of excitement right now, given why everyone is buying to the tech. Um, I remember reading a um, a quote where where someone said, you know, usually when you have a brand new technology, a brand new trend, it's usually overpriced or overestimated in the beginning and then underestimated in the long run. And so, like, you know, you can kind of relate crypto? this to internet. That could be like a cryptocurrency type thing? That could be like crypto. That could be, well, we'll see in the long run if it's right. underestimated, but you could look at like, look, look at the internet. So you look at the dot-com boom of the 90s mm -hmm. and what all those crazy stocks did. I mean, from Cisco Systems to a lot of the names that are gone, Sun Microsystems and, and all these others. Yeah. And so in the beginning, it was overestimated. The, the, the PE ratios and everything was to the moon. And so we had the tech crash but then everyone in the 90s probably got underestimated to what to what we use the internet today um for sure and and ai may very well be similar so right now a lot of these companies are going berserk there will probably be some kind of check back but then who knows where ai will be a decade from now probably well, underestimating like, like, like any of those technologies though you have a couple of winners you know not everybody's going to be the leader there's going to be there will be a couple of companies that really come out and and are the big wigs as far as artificial intelligence go and I think uh, some of those companies have already been scooped up by Google and Microsoft and, and some of those. So so that's that may be leading some of the concentration that you're talking about in the in the index where, you know, Microsoft is doing really well and, and Apple's doing really well and Google's doing really well. And, and that's where, you know, that's where a lot of those smaller companies have already been scooped up and they're that's how they become parts of the of the portfolio there. As far as the concentration, we don't have a chart on this, but I was looking at it. Um, this is the first time, I think in maybe 50 years or, or ever, where your two biggest companies in the index, Apple and Microsoft, they represent, just the two of them represent 14% of the market. Yeah. Which is pretty crazy. So yeah, there's a lot of consolidation going on for sure. Mm -hmm. So well, this is a lot different too than what we saw last year, right? I mean, last year, whole conversation was around, you know, 
interest rates, inflation, and how poor the NASDAQ and the tech stocks were doing relative to the value. And that was just kind of glad you brought that up. Everybody's just about to sell all of their value and buy tech. <laughs> when last year it was sell tech, sell everything that looked like growth, um, buy dividends and buy oil companies, and energy. buy energy, because yeah. oil was going up and we didn't know when that was going to go down. And especially with the fear around um, Ukraine war and energy prices, et cetera. So I think we got a chart on that, the 22 versus 23. This one's pretty neat. Yeah, you don't see this very often. Yeah, and so what, what you're seeing here is the dramatic difference between last year, which was in red, and this year to start the year um, in blue. And so, you know, we can all speak a little bit about what we see with clients. And so often, you know, we we had battled conversations last year about why am I in these growth stocks? I shouldn't be in these growth stocks. Shouldn't we just have more energy, more oil? That's the only thing that's working. And now you look this year, it's the worst performing thing that you could have owned. And so this is a great case just for diversification, kind of stay in the course. Um, you know, your investments kind of move like pistons in an engine and what goes down comes back up and what goes up may come back down. But trying to time that is is pretty impossible yeah and that kind of goes to what chris was saying too about the the single stock i mean you got the nvidia right nvidia announced yesterday and that was you know that's all everybody's talking about but for every nvidia there's there's 15 others that you could have owned for the last 10 years and made zero zero money mm -hmm. um right. you said single stock is is definitely a crapshoot um you know you hit it right every here, here and there but the, the case for diversification can be made well, well, and it goes I, back to what we were just talking about a little bit ago, too, Jason, on it with, uh, you know, we talked about this year being the growth into technology. Last year was the opposite. And then we go back to 2020, even the year before. And it was, you know, COVID, everything shut down and growth takes off and value goes down. And so from year to year, the last three, four years, it's kind of been a flip flop between growth and value where, you know, picking that right sector, that right uh, growth or value every year has been really tough. Well, it makes a case to own both and it makes yep. a case to be diversified. Uh, we're all guilty of this. And, and I've talked to many clients where they will look. I mean, most people look at their statements and they look at the bottom line and see if it's growing over time. That's what we all want to see. But often as you flip into the pages, you, you know, you look at the minutiae, all the detail of the positions. And we've all had these conversations with the client where the client has, let's say, 10 different positions. And those the only three they want to talk about are the three that are down, not the seven that are up, let's say. And here's how the common conversation goes. Hey, these three that are down, shouldn't we sell these because they're they're going down and buy more of the ones that are doing well? And and we've all been in that position to as we feel selling the dogs in the moment. But if you look at just that like that chart we we had, it would have been the exact opposite thing to do. I mean, and in actuality, we ought to be if we're going to be trimming, trimming from the ones that are doing well to buy more shares of the ones that are down. And that's usually what we end up doing in a rebalance anyway, is is doing just that trimming off profits of things that have been doing well to buy more shares of the things that are down. And over over the last year, in hindsight, that would have been that would have been the perfect thing to do.